Welcome to part one of the video tutorial series on chemical reactions. In this first um, tutorial, we will look at balancing chemical reactions. Let's get started. So, chemical reactions obey the law of conservation of mass. That means that atoms are neither created nor destroyed. Alright, so what's happening, right, is that the chemical bonds are being broken and formed. Okay, so really a chemical reaction is simply about rearranging how the atoms are connected through the bonds. Alright, so let's look um, at an example. So here we have methane reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. If we look at this from a very physical perspective, we could look at the molar mass of methane. So, and since there's one mole reacting, we would put 16.05 grams we would have two moles of oxygen, so that would correspond to 64 grams of oxygen. And then we can look at our arrow like we would an equal sign of mathematics. And if we look at there'd be one mole of carbon dioxide, 44.01 grams. And then last but not least, two moles of water, 36.04 grams. And then we do produce heat, and we'll talk about that in a, a later tutorial, looking at the energy changes that occur with chemical reactions. So if we look here, we see that all together, we started with 80.05 grams of material, and when we're all done, we have 80.05 grams. So we say the mass is conserved. We can also look at it from the point of the atoms. On the left, we see we have one carbon, four hydrogens, and four oxygens. And on the right, we have one carbon, four hydrogens, and four oxygens. So um, we have also maintained the same number of atoms. So that's what we talk about, that atoms are not created nor destroyed. Alrighty, now let's go into the actual technique of balancing chemical reactions. So linguistically, the coefficient is the number placed in front of the chemical reaction, right? So the coefficients are here. Notice that we never show the ones. The ones are understood. Alrighty, now we have the option to put in subscripts to indicate the physical state of the reactants and products. And you've seen these before, right? S for solid, G for gas, L for liquid, and AQ when we've dissolved the substance in water. So the rules for a correct chemical equation are very straightforward. It has to be consistent with the experimental facts. We're only going to list reactants and products if they're actually involved in the reaction, and we always have to use the chemical formula, correct chemical formula. Now remember that the chemical formulas come from the valence electrons and the octet rule. So we don't have the freedom to change that. That's out of our control. And so to balance, it's focusing on the coefficients. The coefficients give us the ratios and we must obey the conservation of mass. So now that we have an overview, let's practice balancing some reactions. Okay. So basically, the first thing we want to do is, is, is look back and assess the equation. Looking at the number of atoms of each element on the reactant and the product side, 
right? If the two numbers do not match, then it's not balanced. So we got to get to work. All right, so we're going to balance one element at a time. All right, by adding coefficients, right? We never change the chemical formula, right? That comes from valence electrons and the octet rule. So we are all wise and powerful, but we don't get to mess with the octet rule. Um, a coefficient applies to, right, to every element in the formula. So it's a blending of English and math. It's a good idea to save single elements um, single element products and reactants for last because you're only influencing one, ele um, one element at a time. And then remember that the coefficients always need to be the smallest set of whole numbers. When you're all done, step back and look. Make sure your coefficients cannot be divided by a common factor. Alrighty. Now let's practice together. All right, so here we have aluminum reacting with oxygen to produce aluminum oxide. So since oxygen and aluminum are both by themselves, we'll focus on where they're mixed together. And we could go, ooh, there's two of those. We'll put a two there. And let's, so let's just do that. All right, so we put a two in front of the aluminum. And then we're like, hmm, oxygen, there's three, but it's diatomic. So we'll have to put a three over two, right? Because three over two times two over one, the twos will cancel and we'll end up with the three oxygens. But now this is going to violate our rule that we have to have whole numbers. So we'll treat this like we would an algebraic expression and we'll multiply the entire equation by the factor of two. So that will give us our balanced reaction. Four aluminum atoms, or four moles, will react with three moles of oxygen to produce two moles of aluminum oxide. All right. Now let's try another one. All righty. So here, everything, all of, they're all compounds with mixed elements. So we just pick a place to start. My experience is I pick an atom and I do my best. If I find myself getting stuck, I start over fresh and begin with a different element. That seems to be all it takes to get unstuck in this type of question. All righty. Well, the phosphoruses are both ones. So we'll wait there. We see five chlorines and one chlorine. So that would let us know we should put a five here. And then the oxygens, we have one oxygen and we have four oxygens. So we'll put a four here. Now the moment of truth. Let's look at those hydrogens and see what's going on. On the left, four times two, we have eight hydrogens. And then we have three hydrogens from the phosphoric acid and five hydrogens from the hydrochloric. And so, voila, our reaction is balanced. Okay, let's try another one. Here, the bariums, one to one, looks great. We have two oxygens. Ah! But we have three over here. But wouldn't it be simpler if there was just one? So, right, so we could multiply that by one half. Right? One half times two would be one. But of course, now we've introduced a fractional coefficient. So we'll use that same strategy and multiply the entire expression by two to get our balanced equation. So two moles of barium peroxide produce two moles of barium oxide and a mole of oxygen. Okay. And then there is a separate um, video tutorial on this reaction. This is a combustion reaction. 
but um, I think it's worth taking the time to do one here as well. So remembering with combustion reactions, we want to start with the carbons. So we have five on the left, so we would need five CO2s. And then we have 10 hydrogens, so we would need five waters. So now we look at all of the oxygens on the right. We have a five, and then there's two in each CO2. And then we have a five coefficient in front of water. Each water has one. So that leaves us with 15 oxygens. Oxygen is high maintenance, right? So we're back to 15 over 2. And once again, we will multiply the entire expression by 2 to clear those fractional coefficients. And I'll slide this up just a wee bit more. And we'll put our final answer. Two of the hydrocarbons reacts with 15 oxygen to produce 10 CO2 and 10, oops, 10 waters. Okay, so that concludes our video tutorial on balancing chemical reactions. This would be a great time to work a few more problems to reinforce your understanding.